a good saying today the fellowship remember the service tonight come back and be with us at uh, 6 30 the service tonight and uh, I suppose Brother Stanley will be preaching so uh, come back here and preach tonight Matthew chapter number 16 for our scripture reading today Matthew chapter number 16 And I want to pick up reading, let's see, verse number 13. Matthew chapter 16 and verse number 13. When Jesus came to the coast of Caesarea, Philippi asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? They said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, others Jeremiah, or other prophet. He said to them, But whom say ye that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in the heaven. I think that last verse telling us is being a record kept in heaven. Never what we do down here it's recorded it's not going to change it's going to stay that way but uh, I'll talk about the last line of verse 13 
And the last line of verse 15 today. The last line said, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Verse 15, the last line. But whom say ye that I am? I ought to preach on whom the men say, and who do you say? Now, I'll preach on that to the Lord will have me just in a minute. I, I want to say I believe there's a reason for the answer that they got here in this particular scripture. We know that salvation is a personal thing. What others think won't help me and you too much. Right. It's what we think. Right. It's what we say. Right. Think about the Lord. So the Lord uh, uh, had Simon here in so many words, I guess you'd say, to make his personal profession of faith and confess that he was Christ, the Son of the living God. And, uh, but I'm preaching on whom the men say, and who do you say? And I'll preach on this in first course, verse 13, whom the men say that I am. They said, some say that you're John the Baptist. Yep. Others say that you're lies. And some say that you're Jeremiah or one or the other prophet. Now here's what they're saying. Some said this man preaches like John the Baptist. Uh -huh. yes, sir. Others said this man prays like Elijah prayed. Right. Right. Others said this man weeps like the weeping prophet well. And so they had different ideas and opinions who he was. Right. Now let me try to explain what I'm trying to say. In our day, let me put it like that, Brother Allen, I'm talking about when he was first uh, started out and he was a young man. He wore a flat top haircut all the time. Any of y'all ever remember back in that day? A handful of you that can't mean it. But uh, had a flat top haircut. He was probably 30 year old. He had any other kind of hair except a flat top haircut. And he was a fireball when they turned over to him to get to preach. And he'd preach and turn red in the face. And just like, I mean, putting every ounce of strength he had in it. Right. It's the way he prayed. And he'd do like this a lot of time. Wring his hands when he's a young man. Yeah. Well, there was a young preacher a little few years after that came to pastor over Tilton. And uh, I never did get acquainted with him, but I heard him preach two or three times. And uh, he had a flat top haircut, just like Brother Allen. He had a fireball, just like Brother Allen. He'd jump up to preach, and he didn't take him two minutes to start. He was done starting. He'd jump up to preach, and his face turned red. He'd wring his hand, say, follow me real closely, follow me real closely. <laughs> now, what I'm trying to say is, you couldn't watch that boy preach or young man preach to save your life without thinking about Brother Sam. It looked kind of alike, acted alike. Well, that's, that's the situation here. Let me tell you something else. I'll get to my message just in a minute. I don't, I'm trying to get over to what I'm trying to preach. I remember uh, uh, Brother James Luckett, a wonderful preacher, great preacher, and been to heaven for many years now. He passed God churches over here and right on the radio every day on the radio. And uh, but he retired from pastor and went back over to Alabama. I thought, well, he had really. That's what I heard. Went back over to Alabama. Well, I got my Bible thing one Saturday morning. Got in the trunk, started down here at the church to study like I usually did. And the radio was on, and uh, somebody was on there. He was making his church announcements. I thought his brother lucky. I, mean, I, I, I thought that's who it was. And so he had a prayer, prayed just like him. I still thought it's him. Read his text and preached, and I, I still thought his brother lucky. And he, I thought he ain't supposed to be over here. He's supposed to be over in Alabama. And I, I was so curious about that. You know what I done? I come on down to the other church, pulled out in the yard, just sat out there in the truck. And the preacher went off, see who it was. <laughs> So they went, he went off. Guess what they said? They said, you've been listening to Brother Steve Spangler preach today. 
I've never met him. I didn't know him at that time. Boy, I, I just noticed Brother Lucky. Well, two or three weeks later, Brother Donald had a revival schedule, and I was supposed to preach on Monday night. He's supposed to preach on Tuesday night. I preached on Monday night, and I thought, I'm going back to see him tomorrow night. And so I went back up there on Wednesday, on Tuesday night, and he preached. Meeting this over and back at the door, and I shook hands with him, and I said, do you know Brother James Lucky? Oh, yeah, that's my pastor, he said. <laughs> so I know it. I know I mean, uh, it's something about it. You can tell, see, if they've been, uh, been raised up under anybody, been around a whole lot. Well, that's what the, that's the story. I told you all that to get ready to preach here a little while. And, and the Bible said, some say this man preaches like John the Baptist. Yeah. You say, how John preached? The Bible said John came out of the wilderness. You do that preaching saying, repent ye for the kingdom of heaven at hand. He preached repentance. Jesus preached repentance. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. John said, Boy, I'm the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare you the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. John said, We're not going to have no crooked business around here. I come to make a straight pathway. Amen. That's the way Jesus preached. Yep. Yep. I didn't know what they thought was John the Baptist. He said, we're not, John said, we're not going to have none of this easy believism around here. He said, you've got to repent and get right with God. You want me to baptize you? Yeah, right. Amen. John preached against adultery. He said, it's not right for you to have your brother Philip's wife. Jesus preached against adultery. Right. There's a man sent from God whose name was John. He hewed to the line. He had high morals. He had a noble spirit. Jesus was the same way. Amen. Right. Right. So they said, believe this is John the Baptist come to preach. You know what Herod said about him? Herod said, I beheaded John cut his head off, but I believe he's rose from the dead. Started preaching again. Read the Bible, see if I ain't telling you right. When he heard the fame of Jesus, he said John's got up from the dead, started preaching again. He might have cut his head off, but the message ring out, ring out, ring out. Amen. 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 He said he preaches like uh, John the Baptist. You say, I'd love to heard Jesus preach the Sermon on the Mount. I, I, I believe I'd like to hear him preach on any text. I just, I believe I would. But a lot of people would like the first part of it. But they wouldn't have liked it before he got done. See, it's, it's three chapters, five, six, and seven, Sermon on the Mount. And uh, the, the Beatitudes, he started off with the Beatitudes, and everybody liked that. We love that kind of preaching. But wonder what you do when you got on down to the last part of that chapter. Said you Pharisees, hypocrites, and, and uh, all this stuff, you know, and started telling who it was. Amen. John preached. Jesus preached. And he preached a whole lot like John preached. Right. What about you got on over our chapter 6? He said, take heed you not arms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. That's some pretty good preaching right there, I think. Amen. And uh, you know these people going around flashing what they're giving? Oh, yeah. That ain't worth nothing. Hurry. Somebody said that impresses me. That pushes me back. You're right. Yeah. Amen. That never has impressed me none. Amen. If anything, it turns me off. Amen. Right. Amen. He said, let not your left hand know what your right hand doeth. Amen. Amen. He said, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. That's the way he preached. He said, beware false prophet. Come ye in sheep clothing, but inwardly they're raving wolves. That's the way Jesus preached. John preached that way. Right. What about over in chapter 7? He said, Judge not, least you be judged. For whatsoever judgment you judge, you shall be judged. Whatsoever measure you measure, shall be measured you again. What's this? Why behold thou the most in thy brother's eye? Consider not the beam that's in your own eye. 
He said, thou hypocrite. That's a pretty hard preaching. Yes, sir. He said, first get the beam out of your own eye, and then you can see clearly get the mold out of your brother's eye. Yeah. And he called them a hypocrite that had a saw log in their eye trying to get a mold out of their brother's eye. Right. I, what I'm trying to say is he preached John said I've come to prayer way make his path straight thank God there's no crooks there's no detour it's a straight and a narrow pathway hallelujah it's the way John preached that's the way Jesus prayed somebody said no I believe this man is a lie but said he prays like Elijah prayed. You say, how did Elijah pray? The Bible said Elijah was a man something like a place we are praying earth might not rain, rain not for three years and six months. He prayed again, the heavens gave rain, there's brought forth the fruit. When Elijah prayed, an answer came. Yes. When Jesus prayed, an answer came. So they said, this man prays like Elijah prayed. Yeah. And uh, men will always to pray and not to faint. But Jesus said himself, when you, enter, when you pray into the closet and shut the door, pray to the Father that sitteth in secret, and he'll reward thee openly. Yep, right. He was a praying man. He prayed. He prayed like Elijah prayed. And he got an answer when he prayed. Amen. I've, uh, I don't, a lot of things in the Bible I don't understand, of course, but I understand. I don't didn't understand too much about you know how much Jesus prayed, but why well, he prayed so much. But uh, he was praying, man. Jesus was himself, and uh, if he prayed, how much more do me and you need to pray? Amen. Amen. The Bible said one time when he sent the multitude away, he went up into a mountain by himself to pray alone, to get with the heavenly Father right. and talk to Him. Right. Before he chose the twelve disciples, he uh, tired all night in prayer. Right. He had an all night's prayer meeting before he chose the twelve apostles. Amen. 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 He prayed like Elijah. When he was on the Mount of Transfiguration, he prayed until he uh, shined like a, you know, uh, just. Bright as the noonday sun he shined. He prayed again in Gethsemane. Just before he went to Calvary, the Bible said he prayed till the sweat became as it were great. Great drops of blood fall to the earth. Right. He prayed in agony. He prayed and he prayed again. And he prayed all. He prayed like Elijah prayed. Hey, right. Somebody said, How many times are you supposed to pray? I don't have no idea. I know Elijah prayed for rain seven times, so let servant go out and look for a cloud and come back what and that, come back what and that, come back what and that. But he prayed on until the cloud appeared out there. Right, right, right. And so we just gotta keep praying. Some said he's like preaches like John the Baptist, some said he prays like Elijah, but then some said he weeps like Jeremiah, that weeping prophet. Oh Lord. Jeremiah said, Oh, that my head were water, mine eyes a fountain of tear, that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people Israel. Amen. Jeremiah was a weeping prophet. So they saw Jesus weeping and crying, and they thought he was like Jeremiah. The Bible said to weep with them that weep, rejoice with them that do rejoice. Right. The Bible said, They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth weeping, bearing and precious seeds shall doubtless come again and rejoice and bring his sheaves with him. And uh, Jesus wept when Lazarus died. You know the story. And they sent for Jesus to come. He got over there. The Bible said, verse 35, Jesus wept. He wept over one person. But one day he looked out over Jerusalem and wept over the whole city. Right. Because they wouldn't come to God. And he said, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou the killer prophet stoned them in the center of thee. How would I have gathered thy children together, hen gather a chicken on the wing? And said, You would not. You would not. You would not. But he wept over. He wept over the entire world. Gave his life for the entire world. But when I'm thinking about weeping, I thought about what it said over in John chapter 7. The Bible said, Jesus stood and cried. 
cried. What about that? He was crying when he cried out. Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man, if any man thirst, let him come to me and drink. If you're thirsty today, I'm proud you can get a drink from that fountain. Yes, sir. That yes. never runs dry. Amen. So they said, Whom do men say that I am? Some you're John the Baptist, some says you're Elias, some says you're Jeremiah, or one of the other prophets. But now verse 15, but whom say ye that I am? Simon Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. My question, have you ever confessed him today as Savior and Lord of your life? Yes, Mama's religion is not good enough. That is is not good enough. Preachers is not good enough. Nobody's is not good enough. It's a personal matter. You got to decide for yourself what you're going to do with the Lord. Amen. Peter said, Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. I want to say a personal word for myself right now. I believe before I go any further. I'm proud to say today that He's my Savior. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. We sang, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despair and cry, from the waters lifted me. Amen. Now safe am I. Amen. Amen. I just want everybody to know he's my Savior. Amen. Amen. Unashamedly, I tell you today, he is my Savior. Amen. Then I ought to say something else. I'm proud he is my Lord. Yes. yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Paul said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his servant, being like him in his death. I want to be dead to this world, but alive unto God through yes. Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. He's my Lord. Is he, is he your Lord? I thought about uh, uh, singing that song, uh, Prisoner's Love. That's what it is, Prisoner's Love. Yeah. It goes like this. When I came to Jesus... I settled it all. Yes. Right. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> I ain't talking about part of it now. I'm not talking about holding back a little bit. Oh, when I came to Jesus, I settled it all. Yes. I gave him my life to control. Yes. Yes. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, yes. Friday, Saturday. Yes. yes. And then you come to church and worship on Sunday again. Amen. Amen. If you let him be Lord of your life. Yes, sir. And I came to Jesus to settle it all. I don't think some people settled it all. Right. I'm not right. being hard, but I don't, some, I don't think some people settled Courage. it all. They just settled it when they don't want to do something else. Praise, praise. Yeah. I believe it's Lord of all or it's not Lord of That's all. Right. Yeah. Lord of all, but I'm proud of my Savior. Yes, sir. I'm proud of my Lord. Come on. But I'll tell you something else. I'm proud of my soon coming king. Yes. For yet a little while, he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Amen. He'll be back on time. Amen. I don't know the day and the hour, but according to the times and the season, it won't be long till he'll be back. Amen. What do you got to say? What would you say if somebody asked you? Solomon said he's a rose of Sharon and said he's a lily of the valley. Amen. <laughs> Job said he's my daysman. And after Jonah went through the, uh, 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 the whale's belly and, and seaweeds wrapped around his face and his head and everything like that and he got out of that mess, Jonah came out and said, Salvation is of the Lord. That's right. Yep. Amen. 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 It is. Amen. Amen. Salvation's of the Lord. Amen. Amen. The disciples, the Lord appeared to the disciple one time, Thomas wasn't there. That's the reason you're not supposed to miss church. The Sunday you miss, you might miss exactly what you need. Right. Thomas did. One out of twelve. See, there's twelve of them. And, uh, but he wasn't there. They said, we saw the Lord. He said, except I see for myself and fill up and everything like that, I'm not going to believe. Eight days later, Jesus appeared back. 
See, had to wait another week till the next Lord's Day. Eight days later, assembled together, Jesus appeared there and said, Tom, he knew who was in the crowd that needed help. He knows who's in this crowd that needs help. Any crowd. Amen. Any crowd knew who needed help. He came to Thomas. He said, Thomas, look at me. Fill him. Assess me. Be not careless, but believe. Thomas didn't have to do all that. He just said, my Lord and my God. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm proud he's my Lord and God. Yes, sir. The Bible said, I believe it's Matthew 12, that the men of men will rise up and judge this generation and condemn them because they preached, repent the preaching of Jonah. And it said, Behold, the greater Jonah is here. When the South rise up and judge this generation and condemn them because they, she come to those most parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, the greater than Solomon is here. Who's that talking about? It's talking about the Lord, amen. Greater than Jonah, greater than Solomon. Right. That woman met Jesus, Jacob's well, run back down to the city and said, come see a man that told me all things that ever I did. It's not this the cry. She had a pretty good confession, did she? Yes, sir. Had a pretty good testimony she got back down there. Why do you say, I don't know about all that. How many of you ever brought to the Lord? Come on, that's right. Come on. How many have I ever brought to the Lord? I've never brought many, but she did. The Bible said many. You didn't get that, did you? It said many of the Samaritans believed on him because of the saying of the woman. She had a testimony, living testimony. And so... Uh, when they sent over, sent the officer over to arrest him that time, and they came back without him. And by the time I got over, there, Jesus stood and cried and said, "If any man thirst, let him come to me and drink." And uh, all the things they had done to him, and how they were fixing to arrest him, and everything like that, he was still wanting them to come and get saved. He cried Amen. out. Amen. They was amazed. They didn't want the thing. Right. They went back and said, "Why didn't you bring?" Him? They said, "Never a man spake like this man. <laughs> never, never, never a man spake like this man." Amen. That still small voice. You've experienced this if you've been living for God in a length of time at all. You've experienced that still small voice. Like Elijah, there was a fire, and there was a wind and an earthquake. I believe it's right about that. But anyhow, and the Lord wanted to know that. But when that still small voice came by, I said, Elijah, what, Elijah, what you doing over here? I need to talk to you a little bit. So I'm proud he whispers sweet peace to me. Amen. When I'm done, when I'm discouraged, when I need some help, I'm proud he give me help. Amen. Amen. I have to see the preacher. I have to see somebody. I have to see my neighbor. I get peace with the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Amen. I can go on preaching, but I guess y'all want to go home. But I, I do want to say something about this. I, I remember this man over in John chapter 9. And uh, I'm talking about what do you think about it? What does others think about it? But what do you think? What are you going to say? What are you going to say when it comes your time to speak? What are you going to say about it? And uh, so uh, here that man was. He's born blind. And, and uh, you know, the story. I'm not going to get all that. Welled over toward the last of the chapter. They kept on questioning him and everything. And they come to him and they said, you give God the praise. We know. We know this man. Open your eyes as a sinner. But you give God the praise. He said, whether it be a sinner or no, I know not. But he said, one thing I do know. One thing I do know. That whereas I was blind, but now I can see. Amen. And when God opens anybody's eyes, they know they can see. You don't have to ask nobody else about it. That's what he said. He said, I know that. He's Lord. He's Lord. He's Lord. I believe I will quit and let you go home. But uh, whom do you say that I am? What do you have to say about the Lord? Now the Lord, I, I, I'm going to say this in closing. You don't, you don't, uh, the Lord don't have to prove anything to us in this whole world. He's, he's God. 
That's right. He's yes, God. Sir. He doesn't have to prove to us anything. But sometimes he does. And he did when he died on the cross. Amen. Three things he proved when he died on the cross. And I'll, I'll be done. Jesus told them, said, I'm the light of the world. They didn't believe him in John chapter 18. They didn't believe him. The Jews didn't believe him. And, but he said, I'm the light of the world. But when he died on the cross, the Lord just turned the light out for three hours right in the middle of the day to prove to this old world his son was the light of the world. Amen. Amen. When he died on the cross, a light went out for three hours. Right. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the light. I'm on the way. I'm on the means of salvation. I'm the door. No other door. I'm the door. But they wouldn't believe that. A lot of them wouldn't. But when he died on the cross, that big veil, I used to think about something small, but I got to that one time and found out that veil was made out of thick canvas, real thick canvas, to say, uh, 60 foot to long 20 foot high took 300 priests to hang that canvas they said that veil that veil the high priest would go by but the Bible said when he died on the cross that veil was written in twain from top to the bottom man didn't have to do with it started off at the top right. and came right. down to the bottom yes sir signified he was the only way of salvation. The way into the house of all was made for one and all. Amen. Didn't have to go to the priest no more. He is our high priest. Yeah. Jesus. Amen. So he proved he is the way when that veil ran. Well he said I'm the resurrection and the life. They didn't believe that either. They put him in the tomb on the third day. He got up just like he said he's going to get up yes, on the third day. And uh, they went to the tomb, found the tomb was empty. And here's what they said. The angel said, he's not here. He's risen like he said. Yeah. <coughs> he's not here. He's risen like he said. Amen. So he proved this whole world is alive. The world is a way of salvation. is the resurrection and the life when he died on the cross. I've preached long enough. I'll quit. But uh, let's sing a couple of verses of a song. Maybe somebody here today, and you're a little confused. You know, you've not really fully given your life to the Lord, turned things over to the Lord. And you need to do that. You need to do that. And uh, sometimes standing before God, Mama won't be there. Daddy won't be there. Church won't be there. It'd just be you standing before God. Me, whoever it is. But I'm proud to know if you'll trust Him as Savior and Lord of your life, you won't be standing alone on that day. He'll be with you. He'll stand with you when you stand before God. If your heart's not right with God, I'd love for you to come and, and uh, get it fixed up today. Father in heaven, I want to thank you for letting us be here sing, pray, and preach a little bit, and pray the Holy Ghost will uh, have His way in hearts now and speak to people that uh, need to get right with God. So probably out of this crowd, there's somebody that needs to get right with the Lord. Help them to see the need of coming and get their heart right and living for God. I do thank you again for your presence and blessings today. In Jesus' name, amen. Stand up with us now.